So, hello and welcome people back to Let's Play Pandemonium. We're gonna tackle episodes from 4 until 6 uh, in this episode. That's kind of how uh, I'm gonna I'm go. Three, epi uh, three, cha uh, three levels per chapter. I have a question. Yes. What's those onks? Uh, anks are actually your uh, lives. Or rather, your continues. And then if what's the greens? Hmm? You should have six greens. Oh, those are your. Those. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I remember now. X Wait. You can push the spikes. Only in this stage. That's a bizarre design choice. Like spikes, still to this day, but definitely back in this era, were just instant death that you should always avoid. Uh, yeah. The, the these spikes are the only exceptions. Wow. It's a little bit weird like that. Why do they, like, sometimes shoot one when they pulsate and sometimes not? That's just deep, deep uh, every, uh, every few moments, every few moments they uh, they will shoot uh, shoot one out. Uh, you have a little uh, a little while at the moment. Uh, so is, the, is this yellow shot a different type of weapon than the other one? Uh, there are three different types of magic. Three, uh, this one is uh, minimize as you can see oh, okay. whenever I hit something it becomes a tiny version of itself however it can still move uh, this noise though <laughs> uh, there is another one which we saw before actually we've already saw all of them I had to lock the doors um, and that was ice which turns enemies into right. icicle statues, right. and that way they are—they stop moving, but they are still objects, and they fall out eventually. Same right. with minimized enemies; they eventually go back to being their original size. However, yeah, we saw they can that move. Earlier. It's uh, weird to me there's that there's one... just like living spikes as enemies too, like in the same stage where you have to push spikes in order to. Yeah, well, they're pretty mean with that. But uh, the third type and the one that's more most prevalent is the fire, and uh, that one's actually the most straightforward. It just damage. It does the oh. exact same amount of damage as uh, you jumping on top of the enemy or uh, you know uh, using Fargus's attack. I did you just gave up on that key? I gave up on the key because I don't know what it opens anyway. I think uh, yeah, I know what it opens. Uh, it moves this, those spikes up a little bit, so you can get the two times uh, uh, thingamajig. Um, oh, and by the oh, way... Oh, okay. The two uh, gotcha. times two for a little while of the coins, but I just don't care. At this point, I have actually activated the cheat codes, uh, the cheat code for uh, Endless Continues, which is why my Ankh number will always say four from now on. It just, just kind of how that pro. And you never die. Well, Ever. I mean, I did. I do edit out almost all of the deaths, except for one, which is just bullshit, uh, because I wanted to show it off. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I do want to say this. Uh, this stage's background is not very cool or imaginative. You're in a cave. Yeah. It's it, it it is not as uh, interesting as the as the other ones, but yeah, the spiders are pretty annoying because they will walk around the. They can walk faster on the uh, on these things than you can, but you can also uh, jump over them. And the moment you, and so long as you don't touch them, you can actually jump as far as you normally would. Um. So. You, when you've shrunk them, if you just walk over them, they take damage. They just die immediately. It's pretty much a oh. one-hit kill the moment you touch them. Uh, same with ice. Uh, the moment an enemy is turned into ice... Uh, then if they, you walk into them, they die? Yes, you don't have they, to... You, they just shatter. Jump on them? Uh, and, like, for example, with these enemies, they take three hits, as you can see. They also take three hits from fire. Uh, but you know, fire is more convenient than uh, walking into the, uh, like jumping on top of them or walking into them, especially with less these. risk to yourself. Yes. 
Um, so, See. I get. Oh. Mm -hmm, exactly so, the same um, for yet. I guess, you know, it's just kind of weird to me. Like, at, at this era of video games, you already kind of hit the point where people were either trying to make something unique or trying to make their version of something, like, to a great extent. And this will make more sense when I finish this, the thought. My point is, was this planned to be a series? Uh, there is actually a sequel. Well, there is. There is a sequel, which came out, like, uh, roughly a year later, but it's not a really much of a sequel sequel, it's like a, a version 1.5 sequel. Oh, okay. Uh, as in it plays m almost the same, uh, has some changes, but mostly it's mostly the same game. Okay. Um, um, and afterwards they never made um, they never made another ver uh, another pandemonium, which is a bit of a shame. I guess I guess, was this uh, someone's passion project sort of thing, or was this something that the developer was like, hey, you know, we want our version of that, you know? Like, what's, uh, what's the story here? Uh, actually, there is an interesting uh, video about, uh, about the history of this uh, little franchise, uh, which was made very recently, actually. Um, if if I don't forget, I'll link it into into the description. Uh, it's a um, and it was actually a passion project of several people. Um, not so much the second one. The second one was more of a uh, uh, it was more of a uh, case of all right. So this Cashing. one was successful. Yeah. Let's make a second one. So a lot of people don't find it as um, charming as this one. However, they do agree that it is more or less like it's just as enjoyable if not better than uh, the first one in terms of gameplay. I guess um, the reason that I ask is because uh, I, I would expect if, if you're gonna make a passion project, you know, I expect it to have more story, I guess, because typically when I think of like producers getting really passionate about something it's because they want to tell the story of you know whatever um or you're going to have more unique mechanics basically because mm -hmm. this is a very simple game mechanically speaking it was a like like i said before it was a safe uh, approach uh to game making at this point uh because uh, like 3d hasn't really been done quite as much yet right um and see, I got another life technically, but I didn't. But the number didn't go up because I have the cheat code, and I got hit. This happens a lot in this uh, in this stage because uh, a lot of enemies will just attack you off screen, which is uh, very annoying. And here we have the introduction to transformation. Oh it. Why did we become a frog? Because we went through a gate. Right, right. You know, you go through a door and suddenly you're a frog. There are, a few there are actually a few transformation gates uh, in this game. Um, and Just, uh, just they, when I was complaining about the lack of mechanics, huh? Exactly, they thought about that. They, they knew that 20, 25 years, almost, <laughs> from, from when this game is gonna, <laughs> it was made. Was gonna that, be some that, whiny, that whiny some bitch. Neil was going to be saying that it was boring because there wasn't enough variety in the mechanics. And they were like, we'll show him. We'll put in frogs. Frogs make everything better. I do, actually, this does look like fun. I like uh, the, the way the jump uh, works. Yes, it's, uh, it, uh, it has, uh, like, it works because it's uh, exactly what you would expect a frog to jump like. It is... Uh, downside being uh, the way that the camera keeps going to the slightly above overhead, slightly overhead view when you jump. Mm. It's making me slightly dizzy. <laughs> but if it, uh, you know, the, it's it's still organized uh, pretty well because uh, the camera will usually, uh, like, if it's necessary, it will pan downwards, like here. Right. No, I'm not saying it's poorly done. I'm just saying, like, 
as someone who gets motion sick easily. Mm, yeah, like, I, I can, can I can myself relate. getting motion sick from this. I'm not getting motion sick actually right now, but I can just like tell that if I did it for, you know, if I'd been playing the game for, for excuse me, 40 minutes or something, and then that that happened, I'd be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can understand that. But yeah, the frog drums very high. That's about it. If I actually, if I still had the um, fire finger magic, I, I would still be able to shoot fire. Uh, but you know, I don't. And now I'm back as Nikki. And here is a very very hard um, section where you have uh, there is a secret objective. You have to not destroy any of the stone arcs along the way. Thankfully, you can no. do it as slowly as you wish. And, and this what I'm, purple what I'm on doing the floor there, is basically the orange goo from Portal 2, which makes you go super speedy. Mm -hmm. But you can, slide like, you, can, you can still move backwards, it's not a problem. Uh, it, if it's not clear what I'm doing in order to avoid destroying those, uh, I'm crouching. No, that's clear. You're going into the, the what's that called, the three-point stance or whatever? Mm -hmm. And that is enough to avoid uh, destroying uh, almost all of them. And right there, a card container as a reward. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there if I destroyed any of the arcs. Well, uh, now you now you've uh, you've done da 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 and leveled up your hearts. Mm -hmm. And now I have four. And thankfully, that is uh, that actually stays over uh, whenever well, I you. I thought this was going to be the Nickelodeon slime stage. Thankfully, that it actually stays over even when you complete the stage. And here is here is something I I really don't understand. Like, how are you supposed to get enough momentum to like do this properly? And, uh, Being good at the game, clearly. Um. <laughs> uh, so and yeah, this after is one that of, first stage. This is one of uh, what, this is one of those. Bit. This is one of those asshole cases of enemies throw, uh, throwing shit at you from uh, uh, off screen. From off screen, and this game is very guilty of that, sadly. Which is especially, especially annoying, uh, since they could have easily angled uh, the camera in such a way that you could still see it, because they do do that. It's not something that's outside of their uh, realm of imagination, so to say. Uh, but they sometimes just choose to not to not to do that, and you get punished for it. Um, Pandemonium, nineteen ninety six. Okay, and yeah, this was early PlayStation One and Saturn. There's also the Saturn version, yes. The year after that was when the um, well, let's see, was that the game? Yeah, the year after that was when. Uh, the Hercules uh, game for PlayStation that you based off the Disney thing came out, which had really mm -hmm. awesome backgrounds, which actually, you know, sometimes had things moving in them or um, like represent very frequently represented a place you'd be going later. And mm -hmm. It likely uh, it likely uh, got some inspiration from uh, from this. <laughs> well, I guess my point was just that like. Other than that first uh, stage, there hasn't been. I thought that was going to be kind of a thing, you know, going forward. Like, oh, you know, here you can see the, the cool places you're going to go, but it hasn't been. So, is it? Do, is does that come back? Is there another stage where? Uh, I believe. Uh, I believe it does. Uh, although it's not quite as striking as in that uh, first straight uh, first stage, or rather, I don't remember it as well. And you do want to get that armor. There we go. Oh, it's armor. This is basically an invinci invincibility power up, and you need just one of them in order to get past this uh, whole section without uh, uh, much trouble. Uh, there is another one uh, you can pick up along the way, but yeah. you really, really only need one. Oh, uh -huh. and by the way, when it comes to the momentum on these things, uh, it actually follows physics, as in. I don't have to angle my jump forward in order to stay on top of the platform. Right, jumping doesn't stop your forward momentum. You actually have moment moment. Well, actually, it'd be interesting to see if they had if they anchored you to the moving platform, so your jump would always be at the same speed as the moving platform, or if they it is, uh, 
it is the, actually putting momentum in. You're you're actually like you will be on the same spot on the moving platform the moment gotcha. you jump. Well, I guess that'd be true if you didn't have air resistance anyway. Oh, and oh, boss have, fight! What? And here we have the first boss. This game doesn't have too many, but the it, Jackie uh, Chan Adventures boss. <laughs> this were, uh, yeah, actually very very similar to that the first or second Cannon boss. One. Yeah. Um, you have oh, to... and he, he can see his damage because he took out a third of his. And yep, okay. Exactly. This, this is actually pretty challenging looking. Like lots, lots of stuff to keep track of. Lots of different types of attacks and hazards. Uh, well, mostly just uh, rocks falling, but thankfully they uh, they're pretty static when it comes to the location. Oh my gosh, that was terrifying! That scream. <laughs> 